Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for Sunday the 3rd of October 2021. In this video, after the first item, Linda will speak to us about Psalm 100 and what it can say to our hearts. I think one of the reasons we have Harvest Thanksgivings is because they are in the Bible. The Jews were particularly aware of the fact that the Lord their God had brought them out of the land of Egypt, which was very dry and barren, and into a land which, uh, in the Old Testament's words, flowed with milk and honey. And of course the land of England flows with milk and honey as well. And therefore uh, they could rejoice and sing. This next song uh, is based on those verses from the book of Deuteronomy but uh, you'll notice they particularly apply to our land here in England. Good morning. In the Bible, it says that Psalm 100 is a psalm for giving thanks. So it's a very good psalm to read at a harvest festival, when of course we are thanking God for so many things. Psalms were written for all sorts of reasons, such as when the author was angry with God, or wanting God to seek vengeance on his enemies. And that's one reason a lot of people ignore the Psalms, thinking they are outdated and have no relevance to the times that we live in. If some people don't understand Psalms or don't even like them, then I can tell you that there are even more people totally confused by a harvest festival and the need for it. Why do we hold a harvest festival in October? Why hold a Thanksgiving service at all? I know from experience that children find the idea of saying thank you to God for their food quite puzzling, as all their food comes from Morrison's, doesn't it? Fortunately, as adult Christians, we understand that we need to thank God for everything he has created. But how often do we thank God, God for just being God? And that really is what Psalm 100 is all about. The whole point of Psalm 100 is to call people to worship and even tell them how to worship. It was written as a hymn of praise, inviting people to enter the temple courts with thanks offerings for the God who made them. We don't know who wrote Psalm 100, 
or exactly when it was written. But we can tell that whoever wrote it wanted the people to enjoy their worship, to make the very most of praising God. In verse 1 of this psalm, the word shout means make a loud voice, make a loud noise, not, not sing, which is good news for those of us who don't have particularly good singing voices. So the people were asked to shout out as they entered the temple, to shout with joy, a, a bit like people shout with excitement when they're going to a football match. But it doesn't sound much like the Church of England, does it? The writer of Psalm 100 told the people to be joyful. In fact, verse 1 tells us that all the earth shout for joy, which is interesting because the psalmist is asking everyone and everything to worship the Lord with gladness. I also think it's very good to understand what this psalm means because it shows that the idea of everyone being allowed to know God has been around for a long time. Verse 3, well that recognises that God made everyone, not just those that believe in him. And just like shepherds look after their sheep, God will look after his people. The temple in Jerusalem was a special place for Jewish worship and had a wall all the way around it. And verse 4 tells people to say thanks to God as they walk through the gates in this wall. So I suppose we should be saying thank you as we walk into our church. And my favourite part, which is verse 5, tells us that God is good. His love endures forever. So he will never let us down. He will never, ever forsake us. For me, the psalm causes me to ask questions which I want to share with you, starting with just how excited do you think we could get in worshipping God? For many of us, the idea of reverential hymn singing has always played a major part in our worship and to be told to shout out, shout out with joy could make us start to think a little bit more of a, an American evangelist TV programme. And it's not British, is it? It's not the way we do things. And yet we should get excited about our worship. We should look forward to it in the same way as some people look forward to, say, going to the cinema or the theatre. Or, or some people get excited about going to a rock concert or listening to their favourite singer or TV programme. I wonder how many of us go to bed on a Saturday night filled with anticipation because we're going to worship the Lord here in church. I'm sure that some people do get excited about God, but not all of us, or at least not all of the time. In another <coughs> version of the Bible, which is called the Message, a version which has attempted to bring the Bible more up to date. Well, in that version, in verse 1, it says, On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourself into his presence. That sounds a bit more exciting, doesn't it? Don't know about you, but the idea of actually applauding God had never occurred to me. Maybe those of you listening to this programme right now might like to have a quick clap. Well, it's up to you. So why? Why don't we normally get excited when we worship? Have wonderful smiles on our faces when we sing and shout for joy? Is it because some of us are reserved and shy? Shy of showing our true feelings? Or because we were brought up to worship quietly or sadly because we don't find the idea of God's love for us an exciting idea because we've sort of 
got used to the idea that God loves us. So we take the idea for granted rather than thinking, wow, God loves me. God loves me. I'd like to ask you three questions and you don't have to worry about that because I can't see you as you answer these questions. Okay, here goes. Are you excited about the fact that God loves you? Does that really excite you? Do you love God? Are you sure you love God? Do you sometimes want to shout for joy and praise God? Well, if you can say yes to any or all of those questions, shouldn't we at least smile? during our worship smile as we sing smile as we're listening to the sermon smile as we hear the prayers our worship well it might be more joyful each if each day we remember some of the beautiful things in this world rainbows waterfalls the beauty of a summer sky to name but a few and then say thank you for them. Now you know harvest made much, harvest festivals that is, made much more sense when most people grew their own food. Most people nowadays have no idea of the great fear for some people in the world which occurs at the time of a bad harvest when the threat of famine becomes very very real. No idea of the relief that people feel when they know that that harvest is going to be a good one and this year they won't go hungry. In other words, harvest festivals meant more when harvest time was a real experience. Our worship today, well it might make more sense if we spent more time thanking God rather than complaining. We all have good things happen to us. The fact that you're listening to this programme right now could be at least one good thing. Our worship might be more a shout for joy if we kept our sense of wonder and remembered that although God is all powerful and ever present, he is also always approachable. Far more ready to listen to us than we are ever to talk to him. So today, as we celebrate the harvest time, let's remember that God is a creator God. Be ready to thank him for our world, the people in it, and all living creatures. Because we do have a great God who thinks we are all special, and that thought should put on a smile on all of our faces. Let's pray. Dearest Lord, please let us smile more often when we come to worship. Shout for joy when we are in your presence and never be tired of telling you how wonderful we think you are or how much we want to love you. We thank you that you've given us so very much but most of all, we thank you for never failing to love us, your children. Amen. That's the end of the second of these three videos of worship. Uh, but again, to follow us into the next, please just choose it when it appears on the screen after I've finished speaking. And we'll see you in the third video in which we spend most of our time in prayer.